Hi guys, welcome back. Our Tax Maker application is near completion. In this model, we'll be focusing on the Alarm Manager. What about we're going to uh, create a reminder for the tax that we might have set uh, based on the due date. Uh, for us to actually trigger the Alarm uh, Manager, uh, you would actually do that from the Tax Detail Activity. Uh, after you might have set the date selection, and if you should look at this if else statement, uh, if the due date is less than the time, since we don't need uh, a backward uh, time uh, management system, uh, that's why you need to toast that tax alarm cannot be set uh, to a past date. Else, definitely, uh, there is a due date further. Uh, you could now trigger the alarm scheduler and you schedule the alarm uh, passing three parameters. First is the context, which is the application context. The second is the due date. And the third is the tax URI, which is our, our unique to a particular tax. So we get to know the due date and the tax that is actually going to be uh, triggered at that point in time. So that's the three parameters we'll be passing into uh, the method called schedule alarm right there in the alarm scheduler. You could actually make a toast that the tax alarm has been set at this point in time. So after, this is actually done when the date selection, uh, you click on the date picker. You set the year, the month, and the day, and even the time. The default time is 12 noon. Uh, so you're going to have that uh, right there in milliseconds, which you could see here. You convert that to milliseconds, and uh, you pass that into the due date, which you have here. So we get to look at the alarm manager and the scheduler. Likewise, the alarm service, because we're actually going to be uh, using a notification to trigger uh, when the, uh, uh, the, the due date is uh, as we met and on click of this notification this is actually going to usher you to that particular tax detail so you could actually do that as well you have to create a new package called reminders and uh, that is a package of uh, the tax maker app project and right inside there you have three classes the alarm manager provider its scheduler and the reminder alarm service let's get to look at the provider this is like uh, a boilerplate that you could use you could reuse in other alarm uh, manager uh, services uh, you have it as a provider and you have the class is a tag in a way and uh, an alarm manager this is an object of the alarm manager class and uh, you could inject the alarm manager at this point in time and uh, you set up the get alarm manager where you get to synchronize uh, with the manager itself Get the system service and you call the context alarm service so that's cool so this is like a boilerplate which you could use over and over again but we'll get to look at the logic further in the scheduler uh, you need to schedule a reminder alarm at the specified time for the given tax uh, you're going to actually have the context which is the local application or, or activity context the alarm time in milliseconds that's the start time and the reminder tax which is in uri which is re re referencing the tax of the content provider. So you have the scheduler alarm method right inside the alarm scheduler class that takes these three parameters I've just mentioned. And you schedule the alarm uh, which will update an existing item of the same tax uh, by having an object of the alarm manager. And you have an operation uh, which is an appending intent. Once you're actually uh, dealing with some alarm uh, notification, you use the pending intent. And at this point in time, you get the reminder pending intent continually remind uh, the device and uh, you pass in the context and the URI that's the reminder tax so that is actually going to be pushed to the reminder alarm service that's a, a, a service that is actually going to listen to any time the alarm due date uh, is triggered so it's actually going to show a notification and for you to actually click on that to get to the detail of that tax you also still need to set the exact this actually use API 19. Uh, that's the minimum API you could use, uh, the minimum SDK 19. Uh, you could set repeating, you could set in exact. Uh, we have different modules of our uh, uh, attributes you could set with the alarm manager. Uh, this is the RTC, uh, read time uh, format. You have the alarm time now in milliseconds and it's in long data type. You pass that from the detail activity and the operation which is the pending intent so those are the three parameters that you set to actually set the exact time for the alarm so cool 
with that uh, setup you have to get the service rolling uh, this service extends the intent service since you're going to be expecting the data from the alarm scheduler uh, you could be expecting an intent data that's why you could just extend the intent service to actually listen to any intent so there's a deep link intent and it needs the tax stack you need to actually put it in the stack stack that's why you have the get reminder pending intent that takes the context and it into URS parameter now as the, the intent action now which is uh, an object of an intent uh, which will call on the reminder alarm service present you set the data and you set the URI uh, which is going to be expected and you return a pending intent service uh, based on that uh, parameter and you have the pending intent flag update current so it's actually going to refresh on new on new intent probably when you uh, change the alarm time or you set different alarms for different tasks so it's actually going to have for current ones so it's not going to model them up together it's going to actually be able to distinguish between one tax alarm from the order this is a constructor cool and now let's get to see how we're going to handle this intent once you extend the intent service you're going to override a method called on handle intent to actually handle the intent that will be coming to this alarm service uh, you have the notification manager we'll trigger the notification manager right here and you also have an intent get data which is actually going to be a URI data so you will be expecting it in URI format so you have it saved right there as a URI and now you need to display a notification to view the tax details based on the URI so let's get to see how you're going to actually do that we still need an intent because now you're going to be pushing down to a separate activity which is the tax detail activity class and you need to set the data to the URI that's the URI you're actually passing with an intent now you see how you're going to actually uh, go further with a pending intent you, ta you start the tax stack builder uh, so that uh, once you click back you're actually going to have a, a stack builder that's actually going to iterate to its right activity so that's the set of this and you add the next intent with parent stack so there's going to be a stack uh, a back stack been uh, saved so you could actually go back to uh, the calling activity and you get the pending intent to do that now let's see how we're going to grab the tax description uh, you call on the cursor you are, you are going to have the cursor to actually save uh, the return data from the content provider which are assessing the SQLite database you get the content resolver which triggers the query method now what's going to do it is a URI to actually identify which particular uh, row or particular item you're calling from the database you pass in the uri which is the intent you got and you could pass null to other parameters since you're not sorting by any other you are actually calling one particular tax and uh right there uh, we have a description as a global scope right here, which we're going to be using in the try and catch block in the try you're going to test if the cursor is not equal to null and you move the cursor to the first uh, that's to the first index which is zero at this point in time you extract the values from that cursor which is the get column string you pass in the cursor's parameter and the column that you really want to extract value from we only need a description which is the tax columns description uh, column so once you have that you save that value to the description string so that uh, it will be usable and finally once you through with the try uh, block you're going to close the cursor and like close the database connection cool now let's see how we're going to use this description right there in the notification in the notification you have a notification compact builder uh, instantiated with a note uh, object to actually set all attributes the first attribute is set the content title the reminder you can set something different you set the content text what is the text the, 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 the text you really want to show of the content which is going to be the tax description so once the user sees the description you could understand oh this is the tax uh, this tax is complete it needs to be completed I need to actually carry out this particular tax I actually set this tax for 5 p.m. or for 12 p.m. at probably 12th of January so you, you are you will be triggered with that name the name could identify you could identify the tax easily from the notification 
you set the small icon depends on the kind of icon you want to use and you set the content intent uh, which is uh, actually the operation which is the pending intent you have it right there the back stack so it could actually go back uh, that it says and you set auto cancel to be true you could cancel the notification I don't need this uh, I've probably completed the stacks before this notification or even I still don't want to do it yet you could actually go further to amend your or to uh, probably uh, reset the notification or to reset the reminder to a future date so you could cancel out and continue so you build up you build up the notification and uh, the manager notify uh, the notification ID based on the notes object as an ID which is uh, significant to this particular notification which is 42 and the notes is uh, actually the object of the notification that builds up all these attributes so cool with that you have that triggered so I hope you understand how this flows and in the manifest you will need to register the uh, reminder service that's a service that will be running that will be listening to any active any call because that's uh, this is going to be listening to the alarm manager call once the time set has been met the service will get triggered and that's going to actually wake that up so you have the service right there which is actually going to do that tax so with that uh, you're fine you're good to go uh, you could actually have alarm uh, integrated in any of your application even in a uh, in a list a to-do list and so on so you could actually uh, implement uh, the alarm manager service into that so at this point in time I'm gonna be stopping here and in the next video which is actually going to be the last uh, video on this particular application we will we'll be looking at the job scheduler how to actually clean up the SQLite database once we have completed tax you know that will be done at the background so we'll handle that using the job scheduler so with that you could even understand how to actually use the job scheduler uh, to replace some of your in our uh, application logic which can also uh, work uh, using something like if you actually are using the load adapter so you could actually use a scheduler at this point in time so cool so with that I'll be stopping at this point and I will employ you to get your hands on the source code at the same time test it out this is a working application thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout the, this video and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel hang on there's still one more video to wrap up this magazine set application bye bye for now